We are Who Asked Us. A group of Year 9 students who attend Stoke High School. We started our project in April this year. Our project is about preparing us for the next two years and our future. We have three groups each looking at different subjects. My group looked at stress we feel around exam time and the pressure that is put on us to do well. We also looked at how our health could be affected when we take exams and what solutions are there to help tackle stress. We interviewed Year 11 students who were taking their exams and also interviewed teachers and business managers to hear their point of view. We also interviewed our parents. This is what they said to us. I'd, the best advice I would give to you would be to make sure you have everything in focus. Revise hard and generally put your head down. Being a year 11 is just so stressful. I'm not going to sugarcoat it really. It's just stressful. If you listen to your teacher and listen to what she's got to tell you and put the practice in, yeah, it should all come out and you should get your grade. Taking exams is, I don't think they're really realistic, but you have to think that you have to do them and you have to be able to get, do them to be able to get further in life. Um, I, change, I change where I revise every single day, so it's not the same. It seems like it's sort of a competition between your peers because you're trying to get the best grades and you sort of want to beat them and you sort of want to get better grades than they do but you need to think that you're not really in competition. You need to do everything for yourself. I think schools should put things in place like revision sessions, which they do, and just help people calm down because people get so stressed and hit up about all the things with exams. They need to have some stress relievers. It's really ridiculous because it's only an exam, it's only a written exam, but it's the rest of your life and the pressure is just unbelievable coming from every, every angle, from every single teacher. Yeah, I feel a lot of pressure. I have quite a few exams coming up and it's hard. So I, I talk to my mentor and I have a mentee and it relieves, it relieves stress as well and pressure, I'm able to tell them your problems and listen to theirs. Year 10 matters and I'm going to tell you that now. Because when I was in year 10, I thought, nah, year 10 don't matter. But now I'm thinking, I could be getting better grades if I tried harder in year 10. And I could be getting A's, but I didn't try hard enough, so I, need, I should have tried hard enough, and you should try hard enough. The pressures we put on you are mostly for your benefit, not exclusively, but mostly for your benefit, because we would like you to walk out of the door of Stoke High School at the age of 16 with a good set of qualifications which are as good as they could be for you. I think the pressure comes sometimes from frustration because as teachers and as head teacher, we know how well you can do. We can see that potential that sometimes you just need a little bit of help to believe it. I think that I would encourage all of you to have an outside hobby or an interest and to balance your time so that you've got, you organise your time so that you are working hard in school and you do allow time for exam preparation and homework, but you also allow time to do the things that you enjoy. Grab every opportunity that's available to you. There'll be loads of revision sessions. Um, us teachers are a bit sad. We're always here. Um, we're always happy to help you. So talk to us and use us, really. Not very. I was almost too chilled when I was at school. I, I worked very hard at the last minute all the time and I sort of still do that now. Um, I got very stressed when I was at school, yeah. I was, I'm a bit of a worry wart to be honest. Yes, I get stressed all the time as a teacher because teaching is a very stressful job. I love it to pieces, but actually spending time with 20 or 30 teenagers for many hours of the day is stressful and enjoyable in equal measure. Change of government gives me a lot of pressure because they completely change. So a new education secretary um, from central government obviously comes out with a whole new ideas of things that they would like me to focus on. So politics sometimes, um, you know, put a great deal of pressure on head teachers. I think there's lots of stuff as a school we can do to help you with your stress. I think partly it's about helping them feel that they are in control. Providing revision sessions, providing things like mentors that come into school that can talk you through it, who've been there, who've done it. 
Um, I wasn't really very sure what I wanted to do when I left school. I wanted to be a vet for a little while. Um, then I did my work experience in a vet and got too upset when the animals had to be put down. I didn't want to be a teacher. That was the last thing I wanted to be. I did. I knew quite early on that I wanted to be a PE teacher. I had a few ideas, but I wasn't very realistic about them because I suppose I hadn't had the information to know what was realistic for me at that age. Education in any form is never wasted. You become more independent, you gain lots of confidence. So further education, you need to be studying something that interests you, but try and keep your options open in case you change your mind. Uh, I really think that the more careers advice you guys can get, then the better prepared you will be for when you leave school. If I had my way, we'd start at five in the junior schools and work through. The huge problem is um, getting students off timetable, but I would very much like to give you more um, input experience of businesses coming into school to talk to you, definitely. You can do apprenticeships in all sorts of things, um, practical based things like motor mechanics, um, hairdressing, um, to office um, placements. So you would do three or four days um, working in the job, whatever it is, and then you do one or two days day release at college doing a qualification that relates to your job. So you're getting qualifications and valuable work experience. Clearly you, at the moment, don't necessarily know what you're going to do in life and to give yourselves as wide a spectrum as you can to go and visit as many different places, um, that's fantastic and it's really good to see the world of work in action. And I think what's also really interesting is to listen to the people that work in those businesses and find out how, you know, th their pathway. I think more visits should be organised to help businesses and schools communicate better. I think we need to know from businesses, from a school's point of view, what they're looking for in young people, what employability skills are most important to them. I think the student voice is extremely important. Absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't have signed up to the, the programme if I didn't think it was, uh, it was really useful uh, for the young people at Stoke. It's always important to allow students to have a voice. I think you're not too young to, to choose and to follow your dream, if you like. No. I think you're never too young to start investigating what you want to do in life. Um, transferable skills are perhaps the most important because as you go through life, you may change your mind once or perhaps twice and perhaps several times and work in a variety of different careers. Do you think I have too much pressure put on me to do well at school? Not by us, you don't know. I don't think we put pressure on you and I think the school only puts as much pressure on you as they feel necessary. What advice would you give me to help me cope with the stress of exams in the next two years? If you feel you're struggling to come and talk to us, or talk to your teachers, you can always talk to us and you can always take a break whenever you need to. The exam system is changing, so I will now have only one chance to take one exam at the end of the year, no second chance. Do you think this is a good idea and why? No, I don't think it's a good idea. Some students, when they get into an exam situation, minds can go completely blank. Um, they can be a great student throughout the year with their coursework and then get to an exam situation and it all goes hor horribly wrong. Do you think I am too young to know what I want to do in life? Well, you don't seem to know what you do want to do. but Well, she knows she wants to go into media. But some people decide when they're quite young, some people don't decide until they leave school. Did you know what you wanted to do when you left school? What did you do? I wanted to work with the elderly, but my mum said I was too young and I ended up going into hairdressing for two years. Um, didn't like it and when I finished there, I'm now, I started working with the elderly and I've been there ever since. Do you think going straight into further education after leaving school is a good idea? What are the benefits? It's a good idea if the career you're choosing requires you to go into further education. Yeah. If you're only going into further education because you don't want to go into work yet, 
it's not a good idea. You might need further qualifications to get into the career that you want to take up. Yeah. So further education is a good idea. Employers told us although good grades are very important, it is even more important to have a good personality and the right attitude to work. Somebody can go had really great exam results. Yeah. But they've got no personality at all. Exactly. Um, aren't able to get on to people on a, with or get on with people on a one to one yeah. basis. So personality should come before the grades, I think. My group looked at the benefits of further education and apprenticeships. We visited Suffolk One and Suffolk New College to see what courses they offer and the GCSE grades we need. When students come to you, do you think they have enough knowledge and are prepared? In many cases, yes. Our, our biggest challenge and concern is English and maths, which is a, an issue for Suffolk and, and for Ipswich. Some of the students do. I think some students um, I've still got things to learn, they're not sure about everything, but many are very prepared and very focused. There's a real mixture. Do students come to you without knowing what they want to do? They have a number of visits to the college before they, they come. A lot of our courses, as you, I think you've seen this morning, are what we call vocational, so they're in particular occupational areas. Some of them do, some of them are not certain. Um, they often do what they enjoy, but there are some students that are very focused, they've got a pathway mapped out, they know exactly what they've got to do and uh, they go for it. If I continue with further education, how would it help me? I think it gives you more choice. The great advantage is that um, the more qualifications that you get, um, the more choice you have about what you do. Um, and I think in life it's important that you make the decisions. Study post-16, I think, is pretty critical to your life and gives you a much, much better opportunity than if you don't. What kind of courses are here and how long do they last for? We have about 70 full-time courses. And they will last one year or two years. What kind of grades would I need for these courses? Um, it depends entirely what you want to do. The critical thing is that we want serious committed students but we do need evidence that you can learn and you can commit and you can stick at your courses so we do expect you to get some grades but the grades will vary depending on the course. What kind of levels would I need to get into university? Uh, it depends what you want to study um, it depends which university. Um, to get to university you need some really good level three qualifications. Will a degree mean I'll eventually get a good job? Not automatically you'd have to study further probably to gain some professional qualifications. And in some professions, in some careers, you have to have a degree to get to the top. Tell me what is good about your college. Why should I come here? Um, I think the great thing is that every student can achieve here. We've got, we, the students are really successful, but just as importantly, I think they're happy. If you've been around the college, you'll see that they're happy. There's a lot of respect. We treat our students as adults. We have a wide range of courses. We offer a slightly different environment to a school. Doesn't mean we're better, we're just different. How different is it being at college to being at school? It's, a, it's an adult environment. So when I was the head at Stoke High School, you may have called me Mr Whitaker or Sir or Head. Here, um, we're adults, so you'd call me Alan. It's a very different environment. Um, we're organised in a very different way. Did you know what you wanted to do when you left school? No, not really. I'd Probably very little idea. Not really, no. But I really wasn't certain what I wanted to do. Did you feel prepared to leave? I was ready to leave. I'm not sure that I was prepared to leave, but I was ready for a change. I felt that I'd outgrown school and I needed to move on. I was pleased to leave school. I didn't enjoy it very much, to be honest. Would you recommend going into further education and what are the benefits? I think it's important that um, you achieve your very best. And for many people, um, Achieving a really good set of qualifications at the highest possible level means that you can go on and take on the world and be whatever you want to be. How do you feel about further education as opposed to apprenticeships? But I think there's a nice link between a lot of our students when they leave go into apprenticeships, either 18 or 17, so there's a link between further education full-time and apprenticeships and they're both, they're both good routes. If we choose to go into further education, will it be easier to get a job after as we will be better qualified? Yes, absolutely. And, and I talk to employers a lot. Um, and if you have more qualifications, you've got a much better chance of employment and, and better employment as well. I'm almost certain that any qualifications post-16 would help you secure 
employment. My group looked at business opportunities for students. We visited five local businesses to find out what it is like in the world of work. We interviewed business managers to see what life skills we needed in order to be accepted for a job in their company. We asked them, was it just about getting good qualifications or more than that? What standard GCSEs do I require to be accepted for a job in your business? Um, you need uh, a minimum of five A star to C GCSEs and a minimum of two A levels. So to work in retail banking, the minimum requirement would be um, grade C in maths and English. Even though they can be important, um, we don't insist on having them. You would require a minimum of, of three, including maths and English, to C grade. Depending on what role you would come in as, we don't always require GCSEs. Is getting a job just about getting good qualifications and grades or more than that? Anybody with um, good qualifications will be considered, but um, the most important attribute of a good journalist is having an engaging personality. No. Um, for me, I think looking at the people that I've recruited over the years, it's very much about attitude and your want and your desire to do really well and to be the best that you can be. We are looking for people who are very good with interpersonal skills. People who can relate to all sorts of people and handle all sorts of situations. Do you take apprenticeships? Uh, no, we haven't taken on apprenticeships, although um, that is something that, that we should consider. It's something that we would look at, but we do tend to do more with apprenticeships once you are part of our business. We don't do apprentice schemes. We do do things like marks and starts, so we do a lot of schemes like that through the Prince's Trust as well. Currently, we have uh, 22 engineering apprentices at the port. There has to be a minimum of 18. We do take apprenticeships. Um, the minimum age we will take somebody is 15. How easy is it to get a job in your business? Uh, we do have a rigorous recruitment process uh, which invo involves both online tests and face-to-face -face interviews. But I think the great thing is at Lloyd's TSB we're always looking to take on uh, young people, uh, people that are looking for a career inside the organisation. Very tough. Uh, if I put an advert in, in my paper tomorrow for a trainee reporter, I would probably get something like 150 applicants. We advertise on the web under the Marks and Spencers website, so all our vacancies will be advertised there. So, um, and some people actually come off the street and say, have you got any vacancies? Because they know that at certain times of the year we take on a lot of staff. I get a lot of applicants. Um, so in actual fact, the, once you've got past the initial stage, if you've got the right attributes, then yes, it would be quite easy to work with us. What do you expect from a young person that wants a job at your company? The best way to actually get your foot in the door is to volunteer to someone like me to say, can I come and work for you for two weeks? I'm just really, really interested. I think the most important thing for a young person is a really good attitude. You know, we love having young people in. So again, it's about how confident are they? Because you've got to be confident when you're working with the public. Commitment, we want them to be trustful, we want them to be honest hard-working and someone who really wants to be here and represent the company and work alongside us. I would like commitment more than anything. Um, the ability to turn up on time, ahead of time and I would expect manners. How do you decide if they're good enough? First step is to see how they engage with other people. When we see a person for the first time we're obviously not sure what we're actually going to see and who they are going to be. So what we actually decide is how they come across to us because the first impressions are always the most important. Once we've got past the interview we will always trial people. How much could I earn if I worked in your business after leaving school or college? Most people that are looking to join the organisation start at cashier level uh, and the industry average for that at the moment sits at just over £14,000 per year. Your very first pay would be £15,000 a year. As an operational person you'd probably be on around the mid twenty thousands. Straight from leaving college, I would imagine you'd possibly be on an hourly rate of in excess of 6 50 an hour. How much more could I earn if I progressed in your business? The potential really is out there for you to, uh, to own your own career and um, the sky's the limit. As a senior reporter, you would earn 25,000. How do you start out in a business, particularly this job? I started out as a part-time cashier when I was a young mum. I started out in business as a bank, as a bank clerk. I hated it. 
I went in at a London store when I was 16 and actually started to work my way up through the ranks. Um, but I started by training in agriculture, which is the basis of our business here. Did you always want to do this job when you were younger? For as long as I can remember, yes. Um, no, I can't say I had great aspirations to be a bank manager when I was 10, 11, 12. Actually, I wanted to be a vet. No, I didn't. Um, I actually wanted to be a dance teacher. Do you find it stressful running a business? I think um, any business is, um, has a certain amount of stress, but with that stress often comes the motivation and the want to do well. I wouldn't say stressful, it can be very challenging and you've got to be very good at uh, what I call multitasking. It can be stressful, but you've got to manage the stress. It can be at times, but I think there are just different ways you have to deal with it. What life skills will I need to get into the world of work that will make me more employable? Uh, okay, I'll come back to um, your personality um, and getting on with people, being able to work as part of a team. If you sit in front of me, for example, in an interview and you won't say boo to a goose, then you will not get a job here and I suspect that would be the same for most employers. A lot of it is around personality, so you can be very academically bright, but what we're looking for is people with really good personalities that can talk to customers. The people that we're actually put off by are people that don't make eye contact, don't smile, um, yeah, those sort of people are not re really the people we want to put in front of the customer. Do you think you're too young to choose what we want to do in life? I think there's an awful lot of pressure on young people these days to actually make decisions. Yes and no. Um, when I was young I didn't have any idea of what I wanted to do. Um, my, my main aim was to get a job. I think it's really good that you've got an idea what you want to do. But you also have to be accepting the fact that sometimes you won't necessarily do the job you really want to do to begin with. Should more visits of this kind be organised to help businesses and schools communicate better? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's really, really good for, for businesses to, to be able to meet young people like you. Definitely. Definitely, because it also allows us to know what those people are out there that are coming into the world of work. I'll throw that back as to, have you got something out of it today? Yeah. Good. <laughs> do you think this project will help us when we leave school or go into college? I do think there's a, there's a big call for schools to come into different organisations to get work skills, even work placements, so you are better prepared. Um, for the work experience when it comes along. Um, definitely, and I think we should do more of this type of thing. It has to. Any, any, time, any time you come along and you speak to us as employers and we speak to you, it has to open up. It's education for both sides. It will give you confidence and say, yeah, I think it would be good and I think it's a great project for you to do. We have been given a chance to have a voice within our school. This project has been good because I found out what the world of work is like. This project has helped me learn about different businesses and what I could earn in different careers. Going to Lloyds Bank was great because we got the chance to see the safe and sit at the tills. This project has shown me what it is like in the world of work. This project means a lot to me. It will help me for my bright future ahead. This project has been fun. I learned that even though you need good grades, it's not all about that. You need good personality and you have to be hard working. I found this project really interesting and it has opened my mind to believe I can achieve. We are who asked us, so who asked you?